I hope we're you all fine. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here with you today for the second episode of our uh, educational uh, sessions on uh, the production of Cavados. So I hope everybody had a chance to, uh, to watch the, the, the short movie we made last week on, on the cider apples. Uh, we're going to continue the process of production and uh, today the topic of the day is going to be the cider, the cider fermentation and the distillation. Um, so please do not hesitate to, to send your questions while I, I, I speak. I have uh, Guillaume here with me so he will, uh, he will uh, tell me the questions you, you guys uh, can ask. And, uh, and so, um, okay, so let's start. Um, so you remember last week I told you that we pick the apples from the ground, that we work with 35 different varieties of apples that we have in our own orchards, plus other apples that we buy from different farms around our uh, orchards. I told you that these apples are uh, grown organically in our orchards. They come from tall standard apple trees. They are produced without any treatment. And we pick these fruits from September to December which means from the end of September, we start pressing the fruits. Uh, when we press the fruits, we take them from the ground, we wash the fruits first, then they go on the table on which we can select the wrong fruits and we take away the bad fruits uh, which the cows haven't eaten yet. And so we throw them away, we get only nice and clean fruits, uh, pretty well washed, and then they go to the crusher and they get crushed into a mash and then this mash will be pushed into uh, the press. Every day we press something like 20 tons of apples and from these 20 tons of apples we got to get something like one, uh, about 13,000 liters of juice. One ton gives 650 liters of juice. Uh, this is something important to understand. We work with very low extraction. You know when you press the mash, you can press it Press it very hard or gently. If you press hard, you get much more juice and you can extract up to 850 liters of uh, juice from, um, from an apple. But uh, if you, uh, uh, from a ton of apples. Uh, but as we do with gentle ex extraction, we're only gonna have 650 liters uh, from one ton of apple. Uh, you know when you press the fruits, when you taste the, the juice coming out from the press, the first juice is very tasty, very fruity, but the more the pressing goes, uh, the less the juice will be aromatic. So at the end of the pressing, the juice is a bit more watery, it's a bit more green, with more tannins, and so definitely the best quality is the juice we get at first in the pressing. And this is why we stop the pressing quite early in the process, at 650 liters only, just to get the best quality of juice. This apple juice, it goes then into big tank, uh, which are fermenting tank. And to produce the cider, which will be used for uh, the cavados, it's a, a very easy process. We are actually very lazy, lazy. The only thing we do is we fill the tank and we wait, and it's all gonna happen by itself. Because the cider for making cavados is wild yeast fermented. Okay, that's also something very important I, I always like to insist on. We don't add yeast, we use the natural yeast which are on the apples, in the cellar, and, uh, and we go for a natural fermentation. The fermentation will start just by itself. It usually takes a few days before it starts, and after two or three days, the fermentation starts. Um, if we have a fast fermentation, which happens at the beginning of the season, uh, we... Uh, we have a, a, a fermentation which is going to take about five weeks, something like that. Uh, if, it's, uh, if it's a slow year fermentation, uh, for instance, the fermentation that happens at the end of November, beginning of December, at the end of the season, the fermentation of the cider might actually take up to four or five months. Uh, so you see, Fermenting a cider for making cavadus as a very slow process, as a very slow fermentation. I don't think there is any other spirits 
uh, in the industry, which is made with such a slow fermentation process. Uh, even, you know, the wine for making cognac, which is quite slow, is about three weeks, one month maximum for fermenting. Uh, and the Cavados industry is very frequent to have a fermentation that takes more than four months. In December, when we press the apple, it's cold around, it's about four or five degrees Celsius, so we have a very slow fermentation. And, uh, and it will only end at spring when the temperature rises again, and then the fermentations end at that moment. Uh, Okay, I hope it's all clear so far. Do you have any questions? Okay. Um, so um, we are. Um, so when we put this juice into the tank, we wait. The fermentation happens naturally. After several months of fermentation, we get a dry cider. When the cider is dry, it's about six percent alcohol. And, uh, and then the cider is ready to be distilled. Uh, we press our cider in the middle of the orchards, that's where the cidrerie is. And then we bring the cider down here to the distillery uh, and uh, we store it into uh, other tanks, just the time to distill the batch. Every batch of cider we distill is 250 hectoliters, 25,000 liters. And every batch of cider is actually different. So they all taste different, and they're all gonna give a different spirit. And that's something very interesting to, to work with while you're distilling. Okay, so that's our steel. Uh, it's a 2,500 steel. It was uh, set here about three years ago, before we used to have a small one. Um, it's a... Uh, it's a pot steel here in the Beidouz region. It is part of the appellation to do a double distillation. It is mandatory to do a double distillation to produce uh, Cavados. On demande comment le climat influe sur le, le produit. Okay, uh, how does climate has an effect on the production? Uh, it's, it's an interesting question because you know, in the last few years, the climate has changed a lot and it's much warmer now in Normandy. And the first thing that we see is we start harvesting two weeks earlier than what it used to be 10 years ago. I remember 10 years ago, we usually start picking the apples at the end of September. Now we start picking the fruits mid-September. The temperature is higher when we press the first fruit and so the first fermentations go faster. That's another effect. Uh, the climate warming we also see cider which tend to be stronger and stronger. Uh, and that has an influence on, on the taste of the Cavados. Two years ago, we had an average of 7% in the cider, which is something quite unusual for us. Normally, uh, we have 6% in average. And we actually had this year to adapt all our distillation process, all our curves that I will show you later, uh, so that we, we still get a, a good quality. Uh, so yeah, the climate has a strong impact on the quality of the ciders, and then also on the way we need to distill to get the best from these ciders. Um, so, as I was saying, the Pays region requires for its appellation to do a double distillation in a pot steel. It means that we have to distill the cider twice. We distill the cider a first time, and from this, distill from this distillation, we get petit zoo, which are 30% alcohol, and the petit zoo have to be distilled a second time. Um, okay, so I'm gonna re-explain quickly the process. The ciders go into here. You see this, which is the big thing over there? That's a cider preheater. So the cider preheater is made to preheat uh, the cider. So we put the cold cider in here, and while another distillation is happening, uh, the vapors which go through here will heat the cider. So we need about one hour to preheat the cider at the good temperature, which is going to be something like 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we only fill this cider preheater at the end of the distillation, about one hour before the end of the distillation, just the time to preheat this cider. 
then the distillation ends, we empty what is left here from the distillation, and the cider which was preheated goes from here to here, and we're ready for, to start a new distillation with the cider which is already 35 degrees Celsius. The cider is fitted with gas. There are different ways of distilling. You can heat with gas, that we call that natural flame. You can heat with vapor, which is cheaper. Uh, in France, a lot of producers like to work with gas. Uh, I personally think that's uh, the best we can do because it's very accurate. When you heat with gas, you can very accurately change the gas pressure and so the temperature of your cider and how strong you distill. We heat with gas. The gas will, uh, so will hit the cider and then the cider start to evaporate. The vapors, they go, they go up. This is something very important. We call that chapiteau in French. You, know, you see it looks a little bit like an onion. And uh, this chapiteau is uh, maybe we can maybe we can see the chapiteau on the on the steel as well. Just to show you, we're gonna move the camera. Uh, and so you see the, the chapiteau here. It's um, it has this very specific shape. It's a round shape, and the shape is very important because in, in the chapiteau, some vapors are going to go through, but some other vapors will condensate and fall down back to the cider. We call this rectification. It means here we can select the vapors which go through and those that will condensate and come back. Now imagine you heat very strongly. It's all going to go through. All the vapors will go. If you heat very slowly, the vapors will go slowly and it's cold around so they condensate and they fall down low. So if you heat very strongly, there is no rectification. If you heat very slowly, then you have a lot of rectification. And that's something I will come back on because it's something very important for us to work on this station. So the vapors go up, they go here, and what we call in French, the col de cygne, the neck of the swan, and then they continue inside the side of the heater, and then they go to the condensating uh, tank. So in the condensing tank, the, 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 the hose is made of copper, and it, you know, it goes like this, and it's cold water around. So because it's cold around, the vapors condensate inside, inside uh, the tube. And then it comes out here, it comes out from the steel, and, uh, and so we, we, we get something liquid and without any color, white, coming out from the distillation. So the idea, what is the idea of distillation? Well, the idea of distillation is to extract from the cider the very best. So by heating the cider, we create vapors, and we will select the good vapors so that we can extract the very best from the cider, which are the flavors and the alcohol. It's very important to understand that all the components evaporate at different temperatures. In the cider, basically you have water, you have alcohol, and you have a lot of other aromatic components. Some of them evaporate at 50, 60 degrees Celsius. They are the most volatile, volatile components. Some of them will evaporate at 80 degrees Celsius. That's alcohol, ethanol. And some of them will evaporate at 100 degrees Celsius. That's water. So if you heat not too strong, you will get that only a part of the vapors will evaporate and will go up. And that's how you select the best from the cider. So when we distill the cider, we do a first distillation, and from that we get what we call the petit zoo in French. Some people call that bouillie as well. This is an alcohol which is at that time only 30%. It was already uh, purified, but not enough. And this is why we need to distill this again. When we taste the petit zoo, the flavors we have uh, are interesting, but it's not yet very clean. And so we need to do a second distillation. So what we will do is we will do six distillations of cider in a row so that we get enough volume of the petit zoo to do a second distillation. Every time in this year we put 2,500 liters of cider. And from that, we're going to get six times less petit zoo. 
So uh, that's uh, about 400 liters of cotizo which will come out from the 2,500 liters of cycle. And then we do the process again. We put the cotizo here and we do another distillation. And this time, from cotizo at 30%, we'll get the cavanos at 70% alcohol. Um, the cavanos, when it comes up from the steel, is white. It has super flavors of apples. It's very fresh. It's very lively. Uh, I'm sorry you can't be with me in the room right now, but we're distilling right at the moment, and there's very good smell here. Um, so we do these uh, we do these uh, two distillations. Now I'm going to be a little bit more technical, uh, and I'm going to show you something here which is very interesting. And this is what we call uh, distillation curves. So. You see there are two curves here. One curve is the temperature in the steel. And we measure this temperature at the top of the steel. So you see at the beginning of the distillation, the temperature is low. And then it quickly reach 70 degrees Celsius. That's when the first vapor start to go through. That's when the distillation really starts. And then it will continue to go and reach at the end 98 degrees Celsius. This other curve is the curve of gas pressure. So when we distillate, we change the gas pressure during the distillation process. And that's how we select the good vapors. So you see, at the beginning of the distillation, we put the gas with the maximum high pressure. Why do we do that? Because we want to have a lot of, uh, well, we just want to be fast. You know, uh, the fermentation, the distillation hasn't yet started. So we want to start quickly. And so we heat with maximum gas pressure. As soon as the vapors, the first vapors start to go through the steel, we reach 70 degrees Celsius up there, then we start, uh, we stop uh, the gas pressure and we bring it close to zero. You see here, it's a solid two person set on that curves. So why do we do that? Because here we are in the first section of the distillation, which we call the head. And the head is made of a lot of very volatile components, which are not kept because they are very aggressive. We have in the head, the head we have the um, volatile acidity, which smells a little bit like vinegar. We have component like acetone, which smells like nail polish. And so we want to get rid of that. But in the head, we want to concentrate only these bad components. And the difficulty is that there are, at the same time, a lot of very nice flavors of green apple, which tend to go into the heads as well. And as we separate the heads, uh, if we have too many of these good flavors in the heads, they are lost. So what we do is, when the heads are going through, we put the gas pressure close to nothing. And if we have no gas pressure, it means the evaporation is very slow, it means we have a lot of rectification, and so the apple flavors stay inside, and the most volatile flavors, vinegar, acetone, go through. Okay, I hope I'm not too technical, and that everybody here, uh, I can follow what I say. L'odeur des petits os, the flavor of petits os. Um, okay, there's a question about how petits os smell. Um, it's in the middle of a blanche and a dirty cider. <laughs> so, uh, how can I explain that better? Uh, you know, the more you distillate, the purest this is the spirit. So, uh, the petits os, it smells apple, but you still have a lot of quite unclean flavors in it. It's a bit green, it's a bit vegetal, it's a bit fatty, and so it's not perfectly clean. Which is the good part of the distillation. The heart is what we want to keep. So we're here, we are now in the heart, and we increase the gas pressure gently in the heart. Now you see, before the cut of the tails, at the end of the distillation, we get the tails, and the tails is also bad. The heads, the heads are bad, but also the tails are bad. And so, just before we start getting into the tails, you see that we low down the gas pressure again. Why do we do that? We do that because here, in this part of the heart, we have some very nice components, like flowers, like uh, 
something very round and, and fat in the structure of the spirit. But we're not very far from the tails, and in the tails we have vegetable flavors, fatty flavors, soapy flavors, and clean. And so the challenge here is to continue to extract good flavors, but not having the flavors of the tails. And that's why we go down the pressure. If you heat too strong in this part, you get flavors of tails in your heart. And that's why we go down here. Then we get to the tails, and you see we heat we increase the, the pressure again just to finish the distillation till the end. Um, for every cider we distill, we adapt these curves. Uh, every time there's a new batch of cider which arrives, the first distillation we do, we take samples of the head, and I take a, a decision myself on how we can make the cuts. Do we cut four liters, five, six, up to 10 liters of head? we adapt to the quality of the cider. We can also change the decision of when we cut the tails, and we adapt that again to the quality of the cider. Uh, we adapt the curves depending on how strong the cider is. Uh, if we have a, a cider which is stronger, we tend to heat faster at the beginning of the heart and lower at the end of the heart, and we'll do the contrary if it's a low cider. So you see there are many uh, very technical uh, setting that we do during the distillation. That makes our job very interesting. That's something I really love doing because you know we can play hours trying to set, pushing the pressure a little more here, a little less here, tasting and checking how, how it comes out. Um, and it, it's, it's a real work and it's very important to do that because that makes the, good, the difference between a good distillation and a distillation. Um, there's another secret I think which is important to understand about distillation. That's when you want to make a good distillation, you should take your time. You know, when I, when I got that steel, I asked some of my colleagues in Normandy how fast they were distilling with the same size of steel. And many of them told me, oh, it takes about eight hours. So we tried to do two distillations in a day. Before we had a smaller steel, so the distillation was like six hours. But I thought eight hours, we can still manage two distillations in a day, so that's okay. So I, I purchased the steel. And the first day we said we, we, we distilled with it, the distillation didn't take eight hours, it took us ten and a half hours. So I realized that was too long, we couldn't do two distillations in a day like this. Uh, and so we've tried to, to change the setting. We've been able to do it in eight hours. But in eight hours we had lost a lot of the quality. So at the end, after two months of working on, on, on setting the curves, we came with curves of that nine hours or nine and a half hours, and that was very fermentative. And that's what we do right now. Uh, so it's very important to distill slowly, uh, just to extract the good flavors, and to have something very pure, a nice and pure spirit at the end. Um, another interesting thing about the cider is the age of the cider. I told you the fermentation has slow. We start distilling in October or November, depending on the year. And we will finish the distillation most of the time in June. So you see it's a very long period. It means some of the cider we distill are very fresh and young, and some of them are very old. And we are actually keeping some of our cider a full year before distilling because we get different spirits from a one-year-old cider and a two-month-old cider. I like the young cider for making nice and smooth and fruity eau de vie. Perfect to make a blanche, to make a young cabinus. If you want to get fresh fruit, something raw and easy, it's better to distillate young cider. But I also like to work with old cider. You know the old cider, they have more volatile acidity. They develop more complexity. And when we distill these ciders, we get a spirit with more complexity. But at the same time, this spirit is harder, a bit more aggressive, and with much more acidity. It means it will probably not be a very good Cavados for drinking as a young brand, but that can make a perfect Cavados for a very long aging. And we like to age the Cavados for a long time here, you know? Uh, you know, 
we have a large collection of vintages. Uh, we have many Cavados that are more than 50 years old. If you want to bring a Cavados up to 50 years in a cask, you need acidity, you need volatile acidity when the Cavados is young, because that's how they will keep its nice, fresh, and lively character, even after 40, 50 years in a cask. So you see, we adapt the age of the cider we distill, depending on what kind of Cavados we want to make. And after every new distillation, I get a sample in my office of the fresh distillate. And the first question we wonder is, <laughs> what do we do with this Cavados? It can go to make La Blanche, an Eau de Vie, which we sell white as a white spirit. It can go into a young blend to make a VSOP. But we can also decide to age the Cavados for a very long time to make an old vintage. And we will adapt also the aging process, uh, depending on what we want to do. But that will be for, for another uh, session. So, as I said, different age of cider gives different distillates. And that's something very interesting to work with. It means also that we adapt the curve of distillation on, of, on the age of the cider. If we have an old cider, we will very probably cut more heads and tails than if we have a young side. Um, okay, I hope I hope this was not too te too technical. Uh, as everybody uh, understood, any question for the moment? No, perfect. So um, this is the blanche. La blanche as a spirit we produce from the distillation of more than 35 different kinds of apples from the double distillations of these ciders made from these apples. And that's, that's La Blanche. It's a historical product. In 1942, when the Pays d'Auge appellation was created, it was allowed to sell its white Cavados could be sold as a white spirit at that time. Later on, they changed the rule and they say, well, Cavados should be two years old minimum to be a Cavados. But if you go back in time, people they actually used to drink Cavados white in Normandy. They would very often drink it white and strong. Um, and I think, you know, it's very understandable because we have a lovely spirit when it comes up from the steel. We're lucky to work with this fruit, which is apple, which is so arom aromatic. So when we distillate, when we distill uh, our cider, we get a fantastic fruity and intense smell. In 2003, we thought it was a shame that there was no blanche on the market anymore and we have decided to produce it again. We can't sell it as a Cavados, no. So you know if you watch if you watch the label, you will see that it's 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 an eau de vie de cidre. Um, but it's actually made the same way as a Pays d'Auge Cavados. Uh, we take a lot of care to select the cider that will make a good blanche. We mainly work with young ciders, very aromatic ciders, and it's a very strict selection to get the purest uh, flavors of the cider apple. You know, the cider apple is not a stunning flavor, it's a very subtle flavor. It's very delicate. And so that's what I have here. Um, a very delicate nose, it's intense, but it's... Uh, and it's also very subtle. Mm. La Blanche is also a very round spirit. It's very smooth, very round and easy. And that's because of this double distillation process, because of the fact it's made with young ciders, and because of a very slow distillation process. Um, how do we drink Blanche? There are many good ways to have it. 
as I said, in the old time, they would not wonder how they would drink it. They would just drink it at any time. <laughs> uh, they would drink it to work, to go to work during the day with food in the morning. Uh, nowadays, uh, the good ways to, to enjoy a blanche are with food. I think blanche makes, makes a perfect match with seafood. And you know here in Normandy we have a, a big cost, we have a lot of uh, nice seafood. And uh, that's really something I love, sharing a nice plate of seafood with a good glass of blanche. That's a really perfect match. Uh, you can uh, match blanche with uh, different desserts. Uh, a, a lime ice cream, for example, will make a perfect match with some blanche. Um, there was this tradition in France that we really love, and we're trying to, you know, we, we want to work again on, on this tradition, uh, which was the Café Calma. You know, as I said, people drank a lot of blanche, and very often they would actually drink it, blend it with coffee. Uh, so they would mix, you know, you, they would serve the coffee, and they would top the coffee with some blanche. And that was the Café Canva. But very often, after drinking the cup of coffee, they would add some more blanche in the cup to rinse the cup. And that was called in French la rincette. And then, so they would drink what was left in the cup with la rincette. If the cup was not completely clean, they would add another one, a sucre rincette. <laughs> and so this could continue for, for quite long. Um, but it's a great match between the flavors of apples and the flavor of a good coffee. And recently we have worked actually with the uh, Brûlerie de Belleville, which is a very nice uh, tour factor in, uh, in Paris. And we've worked on, uh, on, uh, on reinventing the Café Calva, and we find you know, the, the, the perfect match, use, selecting the best kind of coffee to be served with the Cavados. And what we found was a, a, a very good kind of espresso with a small seal of blanche in the cup. Um, so, you know, that's something I really encourage you to rediscover because that's, that's a super way to, to, to enjoy some blanche. Um, blanche is great in cocktails. Uh, I don't know if there are any bartenders with us uh, today, but if some of you want to share some of your ideas on uh, how to use uh, blanche in, uh, in cocktails, uh, we see that a lot uh, all around the world, I must say. There are a few very simple recipes uh, that I can share. Uh, an easy one called the salt and pepper, which was made uh, at uh, uh, Daddy Co Bar in Paris. And uh, it's, uh, it's a recipe, so you, you take about four cl of, of blanche, a little more, I think it's four and a half cl, two cl of uh, liquid syrup, two cl of lemon juice, and you add a bit of bitter in it, and that's made uh, shaken. And it's, uh, it's a very easy cocktail to make, very well balanced and interesting, and it really uh, shows uh, perfectly the, the flavors of, of, of La Blanche. Um, what else? There's another cocktail which I like, which is called uh, La Chance, which is made of Aperol, Suze, and Blanche. Uh, also another quite easy recipe, and that was from the Moonshiner. Um, La Rincette. On demande le nom, le fait de rincer, le calvado, ah, la rincette, yeah, la rincette. So that, yeah, so the, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give that name again. When you rinse the, the cup of coffee, we say rincette. You know, it's, it's a funny French name to say that you, you make a, a, a small, a short rinsing. You know, it's a rincette. Rincer in, in French is like to rinse. So la rincette is a short rinsing. We say la rincette, and then we used to do the sur rincette. Right. Like, uh, you do it again. <laughs> And um, okay, so many options on how to use blanche and cocktails. The bartenders are, are very Something talented good. to find your recipes. If some of you guys want to share with us ideas, you are very welcome. And tell us where actually we can come and taste your, your recipes in your bars and where they are located. Uh, do not hesitate. Uh, that's, that's a good moment to share ideas. The oldest tracks we have 
about distillation in Normandy as from uh, as from the 17th century. So it's quite some time ago. It's quite likely that cider was actually distilled before the 17th century in Normandy already, but we have no written document uh, to testify. Uh, but Cavados is made in Normandy for yeah probably uh, more than 400 years. That's a very historical spirit. The shape of the steel have changed a lot during the time, um, but uh, but I, I would say probably it's 50 years that you know the shape don't change much anymore. Um, and I consider these two, which is so. This is you know it's, it's a French steel. Uh, it's actually produced in Cognac. They use the same kind of steel to produce Cognac. It's a very specific shape from, uh, from the French steel, and I think it's what gives the best result for, for good candles. So, uh, est -ce peut la blanche? so the blanche is, uh, can be found in many good wine shops. Uh, if you can't find it around, around where you are, you can order it, of course, on our internet site. Um, but mainly, uh, yeah, many wine shops have it. Uh, and you can also uh, find it in many good restaurants and bars. OK, so there's just one little thing that I can tell you about a glass of blanche. In a glass of blanche, you have about seven apples. Um, you need eight kilos of apples to make a bottle of blanche. Um, and the doctor says one apple a day, keep the doctor away. So I hope you had a, a good session. Uh, please do not hesitate to continue and put your questions uh, after, after the live and I will uh, also answer later. Cheers everybody, we'll meet again uh, next week. Uh, at the same time, 6 p.m. French time, and next week we will be in the cellars, and I will uh, tell you about how to age a good Cavados, and I will try to detail uh, the way we work in the cellars, the choice of the cask, uh, the time of aging, what happens in the cask, the evaporation, the contact with the wood. There are also many interesting things to, to show uh, with you. Good evening, everyone.